Hundreds of people watched, some trying to stop the teen, and others coaxing her on, including her own mother in a stunning allegation. I am sick and devastated. The hummus by Detective K. And then that's when it just started rolling like it was real. That my baby was gone. How good are you at making a life altering decision? Could you make a life or death decision at the drop of a dime? Most of us won't have to. You see, we live in a world where we have the luxury of allowing fate to carve our paths. We react on impulse, but if you were forced to make a life or death judgment on the spot, could you do it? I want to play a game. It's called keep it or give it back. I will ask you a question. You will answer these questions in your mind. The answers are simple. You have two choices. You can keep it or you can choose to give it back. The only catch is you must give your answer in the time amounted. If time runs out, then you lose. And we let fate decide the outcome. The national charts show that just under 500,000 children are in foster care at any given time of the year. Some children that are adopted receive the best future, the best homes, a loving family. And then there are those who are pushed around as pawns, and some even fall by the wayside, those like Naika Vinant. The world would make way for her on December 15th of 2002. She would navigate through life under the umbrella of social media, the one place where attention is the only currency received from posts or pictures. And who else would crave more attention than a child trapped inside of the system? Unfortunately, Naika would fall victim to these circumstances. And the system is completely rigged. The average child costs just under three grand a month to support, times 20 heads is about 60 grand per housing facility. But the adoption process is where the money amplifies. The ones deemed less adoptable go to nonprofit organizations. Those considered valuable go to the independent adoption agencies. If you choose to adopt with an independent agency, then add 15 to $40,000 more to that already 60K a month that they are making. Only adoption through independent agencies will take anywhere from six to eight months to complete. So the least they stand to make off of one child who stays there a total of six months is $375,000. That's right, Johnny. The participant in this rigged system has just won a total of $375,000. Now tell him what he's won. That's right. You have just won an all-expense-paid trip to the taxpayer's pockets. That's right, folks. We all know that foster care agencies are government funded. That's right. There was a total of 631 substantiated allegations of abuse, neglect, or exploitation of a child. Did I mention that every last one of these claims came from only one city? And that's not all, folks. This was all made possible and done while in the care of Child Protection Services. And you paid for it. Those statistics remain around the same number every year. And in the year 2017, one of those claims would belong to Naika. Now, her trouble started, I mean, when she was young, she was only four years old. She would be left unsupervised at the house, but not just unsupervised, she wasn't being fed as well. So DCS gets a hold of the store and they decide to investigate. But when they get to the home, they realize that not only was she being left unattended, not fed, but the house didn't even have running water. And that would be their first run in. Naika was only four. After this incident, it wouldn't take long at all before her and her mother would be face to face with DCS again. A year later, August 2008. 
Naika was diagnosed with a chronic health disorder. Now, when she initially complained to the school staff that she was sick, her mother got a hold to it. In the report, it states that she told her that she was a liar, she was faking the illness, and nothing was wrong with her. Turns out those allegations were false, and Naika was telling the truth. Her mother even threatened to send her back to Haiti so that her life could be better. Now, as far as the relationship between the mother and the daughter, I don't speak on that. But these are the facts, and this is a part of her story, so I must tell them. So, we've had incident after incident. Two years, back to back. But you want to hear something else? The next year, another incident would occur where once again Naika and her mother would be face to face with DCS. Now, in this report, it states that Naika was, you know, beaten so badly with the belt that she had over 30 lashes on her back, as well as lashes being found on the arms and leg area. Now, you want to know what happened and why she received this whooping? She received this whooping because she was there home alone with a male babysitter. And I guess she walks in and sees Naika engaged in an adult act. But that's not the only crazy part of the story. Naika was six at this time. Do you want to know what the report states? That Naika was the initiator of the act. Now, how in the hell a six-year-old can become an initiator of an adult act is beyond me. That makes absolutely zero sense. So when the state finds out, they decide that the repercussions of the mother's actions will be rewarded with Naiga being taken away and placed in foster care. 2009, this will be Naiga's first encounter where she's basically property of the state. So it's 2009, she's only seven years old. The facility that she was staying at would be found guilty of excessive corporal punishment, which basically means she was being beaten. Now, in that same year, she would contract a urinary tract infection. So when she gets to the doctor, turns out that it was sexually transmitted. So not only was she being beaten by who's ever in charge of punishment at the facility, but she was also being violated. And the violation came from someone double her age, a 14 year old young man. So you can really only just imagine the pain, so much pain that she had been through already at a very young age. But even through all of that, she would manage to keep a smile on her face. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but DCS is supposed to protect the children. They're supposed to be the savior. So what the hell is going on? I mean, something that was put here to help. It was supposed to be for the better good, but everyone doesn't benefit from this system. In fact, some get lost in it. So knowing what you know, that... The foster care system manages to take hundreds of thousands of children that were homeless off the street. They feed them, provide them housing, take care of them. But on the other hand, you have those instances where it seems like everything is negative. So if you had the choice to either keep the foster care system or give it back, meaning it wouldn't exist anymore, which one would you choose? But before you choose an answer, remember that there are hundreds of thousands of kids who actually benefit from this system. However, would you give it all back to save the ones who don't? The ones who are abused, neglected, exploited, and oftentimes killed. Knowing that information, would you keep it or would you give it back? If you feel like you needed more time to think about your answer, then congratulations, you're still human. Because life-changing answers come from an emotional place. Speaking of emotions, there's this thing they have called social media. And social media has basically managed to suck the empathy 
out of everyone. But the bright side is, you're only less empathetic when you're on these social media sites. Because if you saw the same things that you see come across your feed every day, in person, it would probably be a totally different response. Such as the cyberbullying, people being threatened, ridiculed, or maybe the violence that you see day to day. But see, that has all become okay because we are allowed to look from our little bubble. We can stare at the screen, look at all these horrible things, but never have to encounter them in real life. But see, somewhere beneath all of those funny memes, the pages that have thousands upon thousands of followers, even beyond those social media posts that are ridiculing someone, putting them down. If you look far enough into that post, you might find a lost soul, someone looking for acceptance, someone that is hurting from what's happening over the internet. But we don't really see that person because we're too busy leaving laughing emojis. Some even joining in to help ridicule that person, not even knowing who they're talking about or who they're talking to. Maybe if the world wasn't in their own world on social media, they may have noticed Naika. So she would end up spending from January of 2009 all the way to June of 2010 in foster care. But she would be returned home. But when she returns home, things don't get any better. Her mother would often report to the social workers that she acts like she's grown and that she cannot distinguish between appropriate and inappropriate activity. So from 2010 in June till around 2014, things would be an up and down ride. But in 2014, they would hit another bump. She would be turned to the foster home for roughly under two months. She would be there in April of 2014. It's June of 2014. So she returned home with her mother. Things were still the same. Nothing changes. And uh, by the year of 2016, things would take a real drastic turn. April of 2016. Her mother goes up to DCS, walks through the front door, hands her child to the social worker and said, she's had it. She's your problem now. Hands her daughter off, walks out of the door, and from then on, she'll remain in foster care. For the next 14 months, Naika would spend her time in 14 different foster homes with three episodes of removal. So in between this time of being shipped from home to home, Naika starts to rely on social media to make her feel loved. And that's when all the trouble begins. She is now trapped inside of the system, looking for attention from someone after being switched between so many homes. Now she's at the point feeling like nobody wants her, nobody cares. Also, during the time that she's being from ship from home to home, she's also being violated. Basically, deja vu from her younger years. Now, during the time that this was all going along, she was constantly pleading with DCS to send her home to her mother. She would even plead to her mother to let her come home. But at this point, she doesn't want anything to do with her. She refuses to take her back. All while this was going on, she maintained a constant presence on social media and started to garner the attention of people who just like to ruin people's day, talk about them, get on their live stream and say negative things. And this was becoming an ongoing thing every time she went live. So after experiencing these horrible things for so long, she would make a decision. In January of 2017, 
She would go inside of the bathroom, stall at her foster home. She would end up going live for a few hours. She would talk a couple of hours, basically just rant, tell how she felt, how she didn't belong here. No one loved her, etc. So all while this is going on, the people in the comments were all basically egging on the notion of suicide. So peer pressure is something that a lot of people cannot overcome. And I feel like that this played a major role in this situation. She was always seeking acceptance because all that ever happened to her was that she was given away time after time after time after time. Now count those up between the last 16 months of being switched between 14 different homes. That's a lot of people. There's a lot changing, especially for a young child. So after the trolls were done having their way with her, people picking at her, talking about her, they kept telling her she wasn't gonna do it, um, she wasn't worth anything, that everything she was saying was true about herself. So she sets this camera up, but when she sets this camera up, I want you to understand that when she sets this up, it takes her a fraction of a second to place the camera in the mirror pointing towards the stall where she would eventually hang herself. And then I truly sat and thought, thought about the fraction of a second it took her to set that camera up and I realized she had planned this. This is something that she had practiced out. When you start to fumble with your camera and trying to get the right angle, you know how long it takes, but it didn't take her any time at all. And while she was standing there, they were constantly commenting, saying, do it, do it, do it. You're a faker. It's not real. You're putting on a hoax. So guess what? She does it. But it gets worse because after she initiates the action, people were still there commenting, saying she was faking. She wasn't doing it. And this was all a joke. So the video begins to pick up numbers and it circulates widely goes viral Facebook decides to take the video down they got it down pretty quick so everyone who had saw that video decides to head over to her page so they go to her last post her last live video and they all begin to comment this was fake it's a hoax it was all a joke she's not dead Yada yada yada. People had even already made memes that they were posting on the thread of her tying it around her neck. Everyone's having a good time on this post, laughing. She's not dead. The same comments over and over and over that are still up to this day. Only she did do it. Just a few hours later, after the tragic event, she would be pronounced dead at the hospital on January 22nd of 2017. I am ready for love Why are you hiding from me? I quickly give my I am here 
So in the end, she just couldn't take it. She decided to give up, like a lot of others do out there. I guess the feeling of being unwanted, unloved, especially by the people around you, would do something to your mind. Shortly after her death, allegations would rise that her mother was on that live where she eventually hung herself and she was leaving comments saying that this is what you get for being basically a fast tail little girl and I don't know if those allegations are true or not. They still haven't been proven to be true because you know the Facebook page was under a different name and she had so many trolls over there by that time I wouldn't put it past them to you know go on the video, leave comments, etc. I was disgusted by the lack of humanity presented because if you go on her page to this day those comments are still up and I want you to just scroll through the people look at the things that they were saying I just sat there reading like I know a lot of you must have forgot that you even came over here and posted this on this child's page and believe you me I went back and forth with myself about exposing every last one of you I literally screenshot every every comment that was negative and I was gonna post them in this video but I had to stop myself and remind myself that I just don't get down like that each one of you should be ashamed of yourself it's very sad mental health is real especially in these dark days that we live in now I'll never know what it takes to be in the mindset of someone ready to end it all. But I understand that through all the scrutiny, through all the pain that she'd experienced, through everything that she went through, that social media just doesn't care. People take on a whole nother state of mind on there. So knowing what you know, she's not the only one who lost her life behind the ridicule of social media. A lot of people have lost their lives behind the ridicule of social media, whether it be starting with mental health and someone takes their own life or whether it be an argument that started that ended up in violence. Social media has accomplished to destroy a lot, but it's also done a lot of life changing things for people. Some people watching this video may have never even met the person that they're sitting next to if it weren't for social media. So knowing if you could go back in time and take back the invention of social media and bring back all the lives that were lost, would you do it? Before you answer, remember that everything that exists in your world today might be completely changed, meaning some people might not be around. Are you willing to give it up? Basically, I guess I'm willing to ask, are you willing to give up your life for someone else? In order to get back every soul lost on social media, would you do it? Remember, some people might not be here. Your boyfriend, your husband, your kids. Maybe you may have never met that best friend. Would you give up social media to bring back all those lives? Would you keep it or would you give it back? Thank you.